हेलो एवरीवन माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर मीनू विजारनिया एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर के आर मंगलम यूनिवर्सिटी गुरुग्राम टुडे इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट इनकेप्सुलेशन एंड इंफॉर्मेशन हाइडिंग इन पाइथन वी विल सी फर्स्ट व्हाट इज एनकेप्सुलेशन एज वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड इन आर प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स अबाउट द ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड कॉन्सेप्ट इन पाइथन and encapsulation is one of the important feature of an object oriented programming here we will see how the implement uh, how encapsulation is implemented in python encapsulation is a mechanism of wrapping the data and methods into a single unit in encapsulation the variables of a class will be hidden from other classes and can be accessed only through the methods of their own a class is an example of encapsulation as it encapsulates all the data and the functions of a class the goal of information hiding is to ensure that the object state is always valid by controlling the access to attributes that are hidden from the outside world in this diagram you can see how class is being used to implement encapsulation here we have created a class employee we have a function in it method here def underscore underscore in it underscore underscore then we have the parameters within the method i've already told you in my earlier lecture that the first parameter is always the self parameter and then we can specify the list of parameters required by the program here in the program we have two two data members name and project these are the data members and we have one method def work which is taking self parameter so these data members and methods they are encapsulated in a single unit which is known as this class employee so wrapping data and methods that work on that data into a single unit this is how we implement encapsulation using classes in python now we will see access modifiers in python with the help of access modifiers we can implement encapsulation and information hiding in python we have different types of access modifiers like public private and protected we will see each of them one by one in detail now again with the help of this diagram you can understand how we can de de uh, how we can define different access modifiers or different variables using different access specifiers in python so in the class employee here again we have three different type of variables or data members first is name name is equal to name so this is basically a pe public member so the public member will be accessible within the class or outside the class that means the public data member can be accessed from anywhere in the program the second is project so please observe this underscore project so this is how we define the protected data members in python prefixed by underscore so third is private member private member are accessible only within the class you cannot access the private data members from outside the class and in python we can represent uh private members using double underscore salary so this is how we represent the private members this is a private data member single underscore project this is our protected data member and if we, if you are writing simply name then this is the public data member right now 
<coughs> this slide contains the same information with which I have just explained public access modifier. The public member is accessible from inside and outside the class. From anywhere in the program, you can access the private method and the private variable which you are defining within the class. We have private access modifier, private member is accessible only within the class. That means outside the class you will not be able to access the private data members. So this is how we define the private data member by prefixing with the double underscore. Then we have protected data member, protected access specifier. The protected access specifier using the protected uh, access modifier, we can access the data member within the class and within its subclass. That means the class where you are defining the protected data member and its child class, they will be able to access the private members. Using single underscore and the name of the variable, this is how you can define the protected members. Now we will see few examples using protect public data members, using protected data members and public access specifiers. Here you can see we have a class employee. We have defined the init method where we have two variables name and salary. Now this name and salary here because we have not prefixed here the variable name with single or the double access specifier they are here public. That means they will be accessible anywhere in the class and from outside the class also you can access these data members anywhere in your program they will be alive. Then we have a method show, def show this is the syntax for defining a method. Then in the method we are printing the name and the salary of the employee. So this is how you can print name, this is what you will, you will be receiving as output self dot name. So to access the data members we have to use the self parameter, self is nothing but the reference to the current object. So here the name and salary, self dot salary, here the salary of the employee will be displayed to you. Now we are creating object of a class, now the for creating object this is the syntax we have, EMP this is the object, we have name of the class and here we have to pass the parameter because the init method needs the parameter. So init method is nothing but the constructor. So as soon as you will be creating this object, this method will be called automatically. And name and salary will have the values for a EMP object. Now what we are trying to do is we are accessing the private members directly and we are accessing the members using the function which we have created within the class. So here we have we are uh, accessing name and salary data members public data members of a class. So you can access always with the help of the object name. EMP is the object name, dot operator and then variable name. So because these are the public data members, they will be accessible here. And the second, second way of uh, calling these data members is using the function. So we have called the show function with the help of the object EMP dot show and when you will call this function, this function will be executed corresponding to this and this will print again the name and the salary of the employee. So this is one of the example where we have declared the variables as public. Now in the Google Colab we can see the program that how a program will be executed. So let us see here 
Now, we have a program class employee the same program name and salary these are the public attributes show is the function and EMP this is the object we have created for the class this is we are accessing the public data members directly here and then we are calling the show function so we are accessing the public data directly and using the show function so as soon as I will run the program you will be able to see the output. You can see here that this name Jesse salary 10,000. So name and salary will be printed. So first print is corresponding to this statement, the print statement where you are accessing directly and the second is corresponding to the show function, the second statement is. Now I will go back to the PPT and we will see how do we declare the members as private. Now the same program we are using, we have an employee class here, we have init method where we have name and salary. Now name has been declared as public, this is public and the salary self dot underscore underscore salary this has been defined as private that means this is accessible everywhere and the private data will be accessible only within the class all right we have created an object and then we are trying to access the private member here we are trying to access emp dot salary so we will see whether this will be a valid statement or the program will throw the error. Now again, we'll go back to the collab, we'll try to run the program. See this is the program, same program. Now here, please observe that salary is the private data member and name is the public data member. So if in case I am executing this program, you will observe that this is in red color. That means the program contains error. This shows that, that uh, you can read the error, what error you have got. This says accessing private data member. That means in the program we are trying to access the private data member EMP dot salary and salary is a private data member you can, cannot access this outside this program. So that is why this error has been thrown. Now, <coughs> now we will see the method how you can access the method how you can access the private members of a class. So we can we can uh, you know access the private members of a class using the public methods. So you have to declare a method as public and within that method you can use that private member. Here again we have the same class, we have name as public, we have salary as private data. In the show function, now here we I have defined a show method, this is a public method and here I am trying to print name and salary. So name is public and salary is private but it is valid because because the method can always use it, use its data member whether it is public private or protected we have created a object and with the help of the object i'm calling the show method now if i'll run this program we will see that we will be able to see the output the name and the salary but if you'll try to access the salary here you won't be able to do that but if you'll try to access name here directly you can do that because it is a public method now we will see this we have already seen how to access the private member using the public method we'll go to the protected members now in the protected member we have we have a base class we have two classes one is base class and one is child class we have already discussed that the protected members 
are accessible within the class and its child class. So, the child class also have the access of the protected members. In this example, we will see that we have a class company here, we have a init method. In the init method, we have declared a protected member project self dot self dot underscore project. So, this is our protected data member, we have given some value here. Now, we are defining a child class which is inheriting the base class. Now, class employee, this is the new class, this is the child class, this is the child class and company is the base class which we are inheriting here. Now, again we have the init method, here again we are defining the name, name is the public public data here as you can uh, see that no prefix has been added for name and we are here in the init method this company dot underscore underscore init this line is calling the init method of the base class. So, whenever the object of the child class will be created it will call the init method of the employee class and init, met, init method of employee in turn will call the init method of the company class. In the employee method, in, in the in employee class we have a show method where we are accessing the name of the employee and we have another uh, statement where we are accessing the project which is a protected member in the base class. So, this is the child class and this will be a this will be a valid statement where we are accessing the protected member within the child class. Here we have created C object of class employee of the child class we have created the object and we have passed one parameter because the init method of the employee needs parameter. So, as soon as you are creating this object, the init method will be called and this init method will call the init method of the company class which is the base class. Then we are accessing, uh, we are accessing these methods, these methods and protected members using the function. So, C dot show function in turn will be able to call the show function of the child class which is printing both the public and the protected data member. Now, we will see this program again in the Google Collab. So, here <coughs> we have a we have a class company, we have project here which is a public data member we have employee child class which is inheriting the company class, init method, this init method uh, initialize name variable of the child class and calls the init method of the company class using company dot init self. Then we have a show method in the employee class and <coughs> which pray, which which use which uh, is using both the name and the project which is printing both these variables. So, here we are creating a object of the employee class C and we are calling the show method. So, here you can observe that the show method will be called up which in turn will print both the public and the protected members. That means, you can access the public and the protected members, the protected members within the class where it has been defined and within its all its subclasses. So, as soon as we will run this program, we will be able to see the output that employee name is this, working on project this, right. We can also access the, the protected members directly outside the class also, but as per convention we should not use or we should not access the protected members from outside the class. So, we should always use 
protected member within the child class. So that's all for today's lecture. So we have discussed what is encapsulation, how encapsulation is being implemented in Python, what is information hiding, the different access specifiers in Python, public, private, protected and how the public, private and protected members are defined within the program and where they are being used. The, we have seen the scope of the public private and the protected members in the program. Thank you so much.